I hope you had a chance to watch the first video and set up your basic Node Express server. The goal of this video is going to be to set up your basic read or get endpoint and to um, make sure that we can code that successfully. So without any further ado, let's go to our code base. Our code base, as we left it in the last video, we um, installed Express, um, then we uh, invoked the uh, Express and set it equal to a constant server. Uh, we set a variable for the port and then we called the Express method listen to listen on the port and we got uh, and we started our server and we were able to get the successful server running on localhost 5000. Just something uh, real quick about the different port numbers. These are kind of arbitrary. Um, normally the client side or your um, your React or your Vue or your Angular or whatever, your, you know, the, the um, the side of the project that's going to be the visual side to the customer, those tend to run in development on local on, on port 3000. You can put anything here. You can put 9000. You could put 9999. Whatever. I think it's just kind of a convention. When I was learning, uh, we just tended to use port 5000. But there's there's no real mystery as to or specifics or specificity as to which port that you're going to use here. So anyway, that's how we ended up. And so now let's create a basic. Um, so what 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 we're going to do is um, an express API should have at least four operations to be considered complete. And we refer to them by the acronym CRUD, C-R-U-D. The C meaning create. We need to be able to create data we need to be able to then our read data and then we need to be able to you update data change it update it and then we need to be able to, to D de delete data and so today we're going to be looking at the R or read and Express provides us with a verb like um, this is a verb listen Express pro provides us with a verb um, called get. And so what we're going to do right here is set up basically the different routes. And so to explain what a route is, is um, in a common web page, you'll have a URL. And this might be the route right here. And then the rest of it, it's more specific. So YouTube.com is the general general site, but then within it, there's a lot more detail that tells which specific video that it's going to go to. Well, that's basically the same thing that we're going to do here. We're going to set up a route that takes us to specific um, that will that will give us that will serve us up specific information when we go to specific URL routes in the web page. And so, um, basically, to do that, we're going to use server dot, and then we're going to use the verb get. And get is for retrieving information. And now, in the next. Thing here we're going to specify you can use single quotes or double quotes doesn't matter you specify list literally the URL or the path that um, that this specific get endpoint is going to be serving up so if I just put a slash in here then I'm basically saying anytime anyone goes to localhost 5000 that is the home route right here just a slash then that's the route. You can also set up a route for login or update or anything else. You can, basically anything you want to put in here when the user types this in their web browser then we're gonna have them do the code that follows after that. 
right now let's just set up the just the home route just the basic when you go to localhost 5000 um, let's have it return something so when we use these verbs get basically we have a a computer or a laptop a client and then it calls to a server it makes a request to the server and then the server gets information and responds and sends a response back so in order to to use these requests and then response back we have to include into our method call here two objects and you can literally call them anything you want but industry standard best practices we call them um, we call them rec and res. Um, rec is for requests and res is for response. And we're going to pass these two objects in and then we're going to, and it's going to return to us something. So when we go to this endpoint right here, when we go in the browser, when we go to localhost 5000, and then stick a slash right after it. When we type, like if I were to type it right here, if I went to local host 5000 and then put that slash, that's that slash right here, then it's going to serve up the information that we're going to put in here. <clears throat> so we, we aren't going to be sending any data with the get response. Basically, we just we're not going to be sending any information to it. We just want a response back. So all basically this endpoint is going to do is say res. It's going to make use of the response. When I go to this endpoint, this object is going to turn me back this response. And I'm going to say res. And what I want to return back is a JSON, JavaScript object notation, and have it say something. So I'm going to say res.json and I'm going to say hello world and this formats it in a way that the browser can read it and it formats it. JavaScript object notation is the de facto sort of translation language that you want to receive information back from a server as as a JSON object because the browser knows how to handle that and display it and read it and that's why we want to return a response back as a JSON and so if I save this now and we go to this endpoint here let's go to the browser and now let's go to our local host. Let's just use right here, local host, local host 5000. Put that slash. I cannot get. Hmm, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Let me see. Server.get rec res. Jason, hello world. Hmm. Let me stop the server and start it again. Sometimes. Start. That's right. Server running. Server dot get. All right. Let's go. Let's do. Let's we'll try it again. Oh, there we go. We just had to restart the server. Ah. 
I know why that happened. Okay, so actually this is a really good thing that this is a really good reason why this happened. Um, I mean, it's it's a good thing that this happened because it allowed me to um, to show us something else. So anyway, um, anytime we make changes and save it, then we have to stop our server and start it again in order to reflect those changes. But that gets kind of annoying. So it would be kind of cool is if we could make whatever changes and then save them and then not have to restart it again. So in order to do that, we have this cool thing called NodeMon. And um, let me stop the server. Control C on a Mac. Uh, I'm not sure what it is on Windows. We can install a dependency called NodeMon, and that will allow us to not have to constantly stop and start our server every time we make a change and then save the file. So I'm going to say yarn add NodeMon. It's going to install that. Okay, now that's done. And now I'm going to go to our package.json where we cr created a start script for. I'm going to create another script called server. And I am going to say when I type yarn server, I want it to execute nodemon index.js. So nodemon is kind of like node. It's going to basically do the same thing as node. It's going to start up the server and it's going to call this file right here. But NodeMon's cool. Every time you save or make a change and save, you don't have to stop and restart it again. So I'm going to hit save. So now let's close that. And now let's type yarn, yarn server. That was the name of that script. And that will start our, our server running. And now if we make changes, like let's, let's create another endpoint. Let's, let's, let's just do another get, because that last one didn't go as smooth as, um, as I would have liked. Let's, let's, let's do another get, server.get, and let's say, let's create an endpoint called hello. So when you type localhost 5000 slash hello, let's have it display something. And we need to include rec res, re request and response objects, and they're going to return, and let's have it um, res.json, because we want to return the response as a JSON object, and let's have it say hello, future senior software. Where developer. Hello, future senior software developer. Hello, let me see, let's put this in quotes here. Um, because it's JavaScript object notation, um, a JSON has, it's, it's a key value. So the key is this, and the value is that, and the value it needs to be in double quotes. So let's. Um, save this and let's kind of watch this down here it's going to start automatically so if i hit save boom see it stops and it started right back up again so we didn't have to um, worry about restarting it so now let's go to this endpoint right here hello so we went to this endpoint let's just hit enter again make sure that works yep and now let's go to the hello endpoint yep and there we go we got our message in, as a JavaScript object notation. So I hope that this was educational. And the next thing we're going to do in the next video is we're going to learn how to do a post or a create uh, endpoint. I hope you come back. Thank you very much.